There we go. Okay, so we're here today. Oh, let me fix that. I don't, I don't like that. You gotta make a change. Here we go. Where my mouse go? There we go. So today we're talking about Sayanagi. Okay, so we're gonna be going over your palm Sayanagi, Murote Sayanagi, two hands on the same side Sayanagi. And if I'm feeling frisky, we'll do a Korean style Sayanagi. My shoulders are a little tight. It's a Sunday. And it's in the afternoon. I haven't had time to really warm up yet. But if you guys have any questions, just like always, throw them in the comment section. Good morning, Big Whoa Whoa. Good morning. Make sure you guys throw them in the comments and don't be afraid to throw it in there a ton of times because I might forget or I might miss it. I can't keep my eyes on the chat the entire time, especially while I'm teaching. Okay, so uh, if anybody wants to start off with a question, let me know. And if not, I'll just kind of get started going over, you know, some of the basics. What's up from Argentina? How's it going? Morning, everybody. Hopefully this time works out for everybody a little bit more than the um, 8.30 time slot. I have a strong drop seo Epona and Rote. Does it make sense to try a strong standing seo and would it be easy? Um, I prefer standing over dropping anyways. Um, that's just kind of my personal preference, really. Uh, I feel like dropping does have its place but you really, you really should have both. Um, but more importantly, you wanna be able to set up your flinches from your feet in order to hit those dropping throws. No problem, happy to do this for everybody. Hopefully everybody learns a little bit. Hopefully everybody gets a little bit of entertainment out of it. Um, I get a little bit of a workout because I'm fat and out of shape, so just doing what you call me in a couple throws is enough for me these days. Um, no problem, Tim. But let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about the first thing with um, Morote Sanayi, because that seems to be everyone's like troubled, troubled area here. And a lot of it has to do with, um, yeah, you can just kind of hang out there. A lot of it has to do with this right hand. Hey, from Liverpool, what's up? And not being able to like get across because they're too tight here in the shoulder. And what happens is they lead with the shoulder and they try to turn through that position and then they get stuck. And you can see that when that happens, you're kind of like off kilter and you can't get that hand all the way to the other side, okay? And the Koreans talk a lot about this, okay? And so do the Japanese where you have to have a loose grip, okay? You can't, you can't flex. Yeah, you're using way too much muscle, okay? If it's, if it's tight on your shoulder, tight on your elbow, you're using too much muscle. You wanna be loose and flimsy, okay? A loose grip, go ahead and lean back, don't get pulled, there. A loose grip so that this hand has some mobility so that when you open and you rotate, you lead with the pinky, okay? You lead with the pinky. That way when you're pulling and you're turning, notice that before I even rotate my back, I'm able to pull him off his base, right? So when I'm here, I'm leaning. See that? I'm using that whipping action with my pinky. I'm not, I'm not just rotating my shoulders and leaving my hand. The gi is actually off the chest. A lot of people, they flex and then they try to turn from here and the gi is actually on the chest. There's no space there. And that's when you get those like halfway dropping guys, right? Where they pull one of these numbers. They're like, <clears throat> and they're way out here and they're not quite in it because they're pulling down too hard and the hand is stuck on the chest. They need to loosen up a little bit, use their hips, use their body for the action, okay? Look, boom, way out, look at that. Boom, and you pull and you pull and you get light with your hands and your wrist. And that's what allows you, that's what allows you to kind of snap through. Go ahead and put your hand on top, there you go. So that when you're here and you open up that jacket, you can fill that space. And it's super light, it's super easy. Morote Sayanagi isn't a strength throw. It's a technique throw. It's not like a big Ogoshi where you have to lift up all their weight, right? You want to be able to go nice and light. Boom, off balance. Off balance. Rotate through. Rotate through. Nice and light. Open. Open. 
through that position, nice and comfortable. Look at, you can't see my hand because I'm curling, I'm pulling with my right hand. That's a super common mistake with uh, a lot of beginners is the pull. They think the pull is front to back. They don't think the pull is with the wrist and the pull is with the wrist. No, go ahead and stand there. It's not, it's not a pull. Lean back, lean back. It's not a pull. It's with the wrist. With the wrist. You get a little flinch in there with your hand, and that's what's going to allow you to drive it over the corner. Yeah, I'm with Tim on that one. That, that squat thing, uh, you see a lot of Japanese guys, right? They try it, like you watch it on Instagram and they're demonstrating it, they're like this. Sorry, Ryan, we gotta throw you. Here we go, okay. They, they, they're like, nope, just kinda hang out there, just relax. Go ahead and hold my gi, yeah. Hold my gi, there you go, just relax. They do things like this, where they're like, <laughs> and they're standing up, right? Like that's what you're referring to, that squat style. And the only reason why you have that is because it helps develop the legs and the pull. And it teaches you, right? If you're a drop chain Nike guy, what it's gonna do is it's gonna teach you how to slide underneath without dropping to your knees because we can bang out a ton of reps just and then learning, learning how to get him up and over the top, right? That's gonna save your knees, it's gonna strengthen your legs, and it's gonna teach you what to do with your hands, right? But to Tim's point and my point, that is super outdated. Not from a technique standpoint and from like a learning how to use your body standpoint, but from a competition standpoint. You don't see too many people like actually getting low and then throwing, right? They're either dropping or they're standing. There's no like middle ground anymore, right? They're doing low tyos, they're getting underneath or they're standing up and they're rolling over their partner. So. The big thing you want to focus on when you're, when you're in that position is the hand, okay? I can't, I can't stress it enough, right? You should be able to bring his center point, his center point over his toes. Stay there, don't step. No, no, relax, 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 relax. Over his toes. You see the knot of his belt here? His toes are here, right, just in front. You should be able to bring the knot, the center weight of his body over his toes. And that's what you're practicing when you do that low center, right? So while I'm in this position, we step and I'm just going to fling him and I'm just going to let go and drop underneath and you'll see him kind of ride my shoulder. So when I'm here and I pull and I lean back as I drop, then we can get him up and over the top. And that's really all you're trying to develop with that low squat. And then when you add the hands, it gives you that ability to finish nice and easy. Okay, so, but that's, that's just my personal preference. It's not that I think it's 100% useless, it's just, it is what it is. But I do, I do think from a learning standpoint, it does have a lot to offer, okay? Knowing how to pull and use your hands. That, that's really the biggest thing when you're talking about doing a Sainagi, is not staying here and just like, and getting stuck, right, with this hand. This hand staying here on the chest. You wanna be able to open and stay loose. Open, stay loose. Okay, all the time, all the time. And we got any other questions? Whew, I'm out of shape. It's been a while since I've done a few Uchikomis. Oh, back here. I got my soda over here on the counter. Uh, Rico, uh, drop Seo. I don't like Seo Toshi very much. I, that's again one of those like outdated things for me. Uh, I do use it every once in a while, right? Like I have, I have a good cross grip kind of tile, cross grip kind of Seo Toshi from the outside, right? I think I released the Iliadis video on it a while ago. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's just my personal kind of preference there. Um, but yeah, 
And Big Wolo, can you talk about the left hand grip that you use for Ipong? Yeah, of course. So look, he's a lefty. He's a lefty. I like to come out here and I have this like looping grip where he can't grab me, but I can punch it into his stomach, right? So I did crack a Diet Coke open while you guys had that timer running. But anyway, I'm here in nice and tight. I come through, I shuffle, Ipon saying I right? I do I do it to everybody, right? I don't care what kind of lefty you are. Let's get this way a little bit. There you go. Right? I'm here. I step inside, bang, I bring your head down sometimes. Big Koshi Garoma. Okay? Super easy. I'm here. I get my post, my partner. Go ahead and grab my sleeve. Lefties always grab the sleeve, right? Because they want it. And then what happens is he rips this hand out like that, and I'm able to change that angle. One, two, from double collar. Okay. The other thing I used to really like to do, okay, is when I'm here and he rips this hand out, I used to snap his head down, come Georgian grip down the other side, big hips. Okay. Ochi, Kochi, Osoro, Tayo, Makikomi, right? Those are all things I used to do from that position. Uh, Matt, that's a great question. Okay. Why, why are we sometimes splitting our hip versus, you know, the more traditional kind of thing where we actually squat? And the trick is, the trick is for guys like me with really weak legs, we don't like to squat. Man, squatting's hard. Front squat, back squat, that sucks. But look, go ahead and stand there with your legs kind of bridge to stand. Yeah, all you got to do is stand there. Yeah. You're just going to stand here, right? This works out really well because me and Ryan are pretty close to the same height, okay? So therefore, the rule of thumb in judo, if you can get your belt below their belt, you can get underneath their center of gravity, okay? So when I'm going with Ryan and I turn, my belt is not below his belt, so I have to have a little bit of a squat, but that's it. That's all I need, that little bit of a squat. When we split our hip, okay, when I split his hip, I'm gonna to go to the outside of his leg. When I leave this little bit of a gap here and I split, now my belt, move your hand, yeah. It's below his belt. Let's go this way so we're more into the center. There you go, and lift your hand up. There you go, it's below his belt. Okay, so I don't actually need strong legs. When I come into, when I come into position, when I split, I can get a lift, right? And then we can throw no problem. So that's all it really is, is I'm just lowering my level by splitting my hips. And the shorter he is, the farther I have to be from my partner, okay? Ryan and me are about the same height, so I can get, I can get rather close to him and come in. But if Ryan squat a little bit, there. If Ryan's like this tall, I can't, I can't just do it from here. Look at my belt, right? But what I can do is I can keep distance and I can lunge from here now. There, and now I'm below him. And then we can pull him up and over because I'm underneath his center of gravity, right? So that's pretty much what that is. Uh, I can't remember who asked that, but that was a good question. Let me grab another drink really quick. Let's see here. Philip, I can't control his left hand even if I press his hand to the body. He steps back with his left and grab my sleeve, then we are 50-50. Oh, oh man. Dude, golden opportunity. Look, Philip, I just wanna be clear here. I just wanna be clear, right? You're, you're grabbing this hand and you're getting to the post, right? You're getting to the post. And what's happening is he's stepping back with that leg, grab my sleeve, and he's grabbing your sleeve. Okay, let's change sides. He's a lefty, you have this, he steps back, and he's grabbing your sleeve. That's pretty much what you're telling me is happening. Ascended something, I have no idea what that says. Yeah, if he's taller, you don't have to lower yourself as much. Um, but look, guys, you can't, you can't, you have to be opportunistic when you do judo, especially competitively. You can't just wait around for, you know, things to happen, right? So the second, the second the opportunity presents itself, you gotta go. Even if, 
even if this is the biggest problem with like intermediate or like people who just jump onto the world stage, right? They're there for like the first time or the 10th time, but they're not getting the results they feel like they should. This is probably why, okay? Because when an opportunity presents itself, an opportunity, meaning not necessarily the opportunity that you thought you were going for, right? When I grab Ryan's sleeve, and I'm here, let's go forward a little bit, there you go. And I, I'm here. When I go to attack, I'm looking for my Koshi Garuma, I'm looking for my Sayanagi, right? All those types of things are what I'm looking for. But when he changes his stance, and he's going to grab my sleeve, a lot of times I'm just gonna let it go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blast him with the Nosoto because he's not a right-handed player, right? The number one counter in today's judo for Osoto is Osoto. A few years ago, it used to be pickups, right? If Ryan came across Osoto on me, used to be able to crotch lift them and then pick them up and then smash some people. But it doesn't work anymore like that. That's not how the world goes round, okay? But look, when he changes his stance and he let go and then go for it. Take your shot, Kochi, Ochi, anything, right? If I know he's gonna change his stance, I may chase it and try to hit him with that drop Ochi, right? All those things are possibilities. You could hit him with a drop sail, two hands on the same side. And it's not that, it's not that it's gonna, it's gonna work. It's more of you're punishing him for actually trying to recover. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, right? Because I'm, I'm looking for Sayanagi. I'm, I'm looking for it. Like I'm, I'm head hunting the Koshi Garuma and the world knows it. So what I did as an athlete was I said, okay, what's your number one defense? And you hit it on the head. They circle that hand, right? And they grab your sleeve because if Ryan's a lefty, let's go this way again. If you're a lefty, circle and grab my sleeve. There, and he grabs that sleeve. Well, I can't, I can't do any of my throws. That's why I grabbed it against him because he can't do any of his throws. So what I developed to punish people for this is a Tomonagi, okay? And I'm not a lefty, I'm a righty, but I do my Yoko Tomonagi to the left specifically to prevent this grip. Because when I'm here, what I used to do, what I used to step in, step in, boom. And then right here, I could sweep his leg out and then finish that throw off to that side. And what it did was, even if I didn't score with it, right, it helped me transition into Nawaza, which was great. But then it made people think, it made my opponents think like, hey, I'm, I'm willing, if he grabs my sleeve, right, Ryan is me, I'm the opponent in this scenario. They go, oh, I have to grab his sleeve to stop him from doing what he's doing. But by doing so, it prevents me from throwing. But Ryan being me, he's not out of options, right? If I'm now me and Ryan's the opponent, and I go like this, I'm looking for my sale, I'm looking for my Koshi Garuma. He goes and grabs my sleeve. He's out of options, okay? 98% of lefties are out of options right now, right? They're gonna do something bad, just get out of the situation. I am not. I developed a specific throw right? To punish people for playing that defense. Okay. So even though I can't do my say, I can't do my coach. She grew I can still score. And I did it a ton righties or lefties. It didn't matter. When you split and get below him, what's safer in order for him to not escape the throw? Is it to have your right hand, right leg inside or outside blocking the right foot? Good question. So what you're asking is, is it better to split inside or is it better to split outside? And it's the only way to know is to actually practice, okay? Because it's like a 50-50 thing, right? Most of the time, I am leg to the inside. And a lot of it has to do with the movement pattern that you're going through, okay? Look, if I get Ryan and we're walking forward to back, right? It makes sense to split to the inside because look at his legs right now. This leg is back, okay? Therefore, I can fill that space and I can score, okay? But now look, same throw, same throw, 
But what happens when we're sliding to the side? Now it makes sense to get to the outside to prevent the shuffle. It is very hard for a player to shuffle this way. And then when you feel me trying to attack Ryan, jump to your left. See how he's like, he's unsure? When he's actually sliding with all his force, like he's running from you. Somebody made a really good highlight reel of me recently. I should probably go find it. But in there, I'm fighting a guy from the Swiss, I think it was, Switzerland. And my back is to the edge, and he's trying to keep me on the edge, so I can't circle out, right? So when he shuffles to keep me on the edge, I'm able to block his leg, drop, and then finish that throw, right? So it's really preference depending on, you know, what's going on in the situation. It also depends on which leg you go through the center with, right? If Ryan's an extreme righty, right, I can't, I can't split this way or this way with my right leg. I actually have to move his leg and split with my left. Then I can get a lift and then I can score, right? So that, like, it really, it's so dependent upon your opponent's position and movement. And the only way to kind of figure that out for yourself is to either, A, have somebody in the room who can coach you day in and day out to do it, or trial and error, it, which takes a little bit longer, but it does work. Massimo, the Uranagi counter. Okay, so basically, and you're asking specifically about Koshiguruma. Perfect. The big, the big difference between my Koshiguruma and most people's, and I've made mistakes over my, over my career when it comes to getting Uranagi, right? Turkish really would be one of them. We fought in the finals of Georgia, right? And I just, I tried to take his head off. I was like, if I hit his head hard enough, I'll be able to take it off and he'll duck and when he ducks, he'll create a circle, right? If he ducks, there's a circle. You can't actually do Uranagi. In order to prevent somebody from doing Uranagi, you have to keep their head in front of their ass, right? So I have to keep the head in front of the ass. If I put Ryan's head in front of his butt, when he tries to lift, he's not going to be able to from here. He has to eventually get his head even to his butt and then past in order to throw with their Uranagi. So you just have to pay attention to that. So before I do the throw, before I do the throw, I get him bent. Then I use my head to defend. So when Ryan tries to stand, my head is actually playing a defense so that when I go, there. Now he can't get his head above. He can try to rotate, but when I roll over the top, he goes over nine times out of 10, right? If you go back into my judo database and find when I fought for the medal in Russia for bronze, in the previous matches, I think in the second round, I fought a Russian and I bombed him with Koshiguruma because what he tried to do, here, you do Koshiguruma to me. What he thought was he could actually try to step behind, right? So when I fired that throw in, he tried to meet it and step behind it. But what he didn't realize what he didn't realize was he had already lost head position. I had his head above him. So even though he's leaning to the side, he can't actually lift from the top of the head. Your low back's not that strong, right? You want, them, you want to be on the shoulders when you do that. So all I do to ensure that that doesn't happen is I start with him in a bent position and then here. And if you look at my match with Turchisili, right, from Georgia in the finals, I actually tried, I actually tried to throw him when he was upright. I was just like, I'm going for it. And look at, you can see me, I'm already going back. Cause look, I don't have his head. So when I try to pull it down, it just leans him in the right direction. And then you're done, game over, go home. Thanks for playing. You're welcome, Massimo. Rico, I'm glad you liked the exp explanation on that split hip. Would you ever consider using Epona and Rote Senagi in a right versus right 50-50 situation? Both have sleep and lapel. If so, how? I personally would not. I, I never would. 
But what I would do is I would work with my feet and my body positioning to set it up so that it was more of like a 60-40, okay? So what I would do is if he's got my collar and he's got my sleeve and we're both down here on the end of the sleeve, what I'm gonna do, right? Just stand square there. Super Japanese trick for you guys here. Super Japanese trick. Look, hand, stay there strong, pull it so that you're pulling the gi across his center line. Don't leave your hand over here, pull it. Okay, so that's step one. When I'm here, I'm pulling so that my elbow here can play defense. So when he tries to turn, no, by the way, there. My arm here is playing a good defense. If I leave it open and he turns, you can start to get pulled off balance, okay? So there's a little like hidden tidbit that nobody ever teaches, but all the Japanese guys do, right? You can see it in their competitions, even when they're here, right? You'll watch them. The Koreans too, they'll have that elbow partly across the body, right? And they'll play defense with this hand because what they're doing is they're pushing this collar that way. Remember what we talked about when we talked about gripping with the sleeve, right? This needs to go that way. His shoulders need to be able to turn. So when I get into a good position here, he's going to have a more difficult time turning. Not impossible, but more difficult. So that's step one to go from 50-50 to 60-40, right? That's gaining you about 5% or so. So that's step one, elbow to that inside. Stay strong, stay strong, there. Elbow to the inside. Step two is getting a push here with the body. So I'm locking it in and look at my elbow. I'm not keeping it down. I'm keeping it up so I'm hiding his hand so I can get a push, okay? Let go here. Here, no hands, look, push. See how his body moves when I move? I'm using this grip against him. And then what I'm gonna do is once I'm in this position, I'm gonna whip and I'm gonna smack him right here. Bang, I'm gonna chuck him right in the chin. Okay, so when I'm here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock him off his base. Boom, there. And now I use that momentum to take this grip off, okay? So when I'm in this position here, I act like I'm, like, I act like I'm gonna go for it and I go back Kochi the other way. When I do that, I hit him. Boom, and then I take this off and then when we come back, now I can one, two, and I can look to score, okay? Right when the grip breaks, I change the angle. When he's stumbling and recovering, we're dropping underneath. Okay, so I, I only gain it for a second or two, and I use that second or two to actually get offensive and win that position. Nico, I'm glad you like that variation. Thanks for showing up. Even though it's late, I'll forgive it. I'll forgive it. But that was a good question, okay, on the 50-50. I try to never throw from a 50-50 position, okay? I think another, another super important part is when we talk about Ippon Senagi. Because what a lot of people don't do is they don't lift with their body, okay? They don't lift with their body. You're welcome, Andrew. Okay, now look. Now look, here. Look at my arm, right? Nice and square. This is everybody else, Ippon Senagi. But look, look at all that height that I get. See how I transfer my weight from this leg to this one so I center my heart over the top of it and that creates that lift. Look, you can see the crash pad and then look, I hide it because I'm gaining. I'm gaining all that lift and that's where my Senagi came with all of its power is when I would lift, I would drive up in order to finish, okay? So I didn't actually need to bend my legs. I had such a strong core, shoulder, chest area that I could just pick people up off the floor with that, right? So we're talking about saying Aigi, right? When I was in this position, I would come in low and I would lock him in so that when I was here, when I would lift, I could get that lift, right? I'm working with my body, not just my legs. I'm working here, okay? Here, boom, into the body. A lot of people like to go to the arm. I have two variations. One, where we attack the arm. Two, where we attack the body. But this one, we're talking about the body. Go ahead and stand square. We're attacking the body here, the body. Lift your arm. Nope, let go and lift your arm. There, the body. I'm not gonna chase his arm. I'm gonna go right into the body so that I can get that power and that throw and that lift. I'm gonna lift from underneath the chest. 
which style of Sayanagi is best against heavier opponents. Um, dropping leg to the outside because you can change it to the Osoto. And you can work from that cross collar, Kochi and Sayanagi, Tayo, Tayo, Sayo, all that stuff right from the outside, right? So basically you would kill that front sleeve. You would have your Kochi right off to that corner. You would have your Sayanagi over the top. Then you would have your Osoto Sayanagi to the back corner, right? Where you beat the knee with your butt to get him to trip over the top. And then you would have your direct to the side Tayo Sayo. That would be the best combos for heavier guys. No. Uh, is that Michelle? Michael? Can't read it. The letters are all scrunched together for some reason. No, if my opponent, if my opponent is shuffling to their right, my left, I'm not stepping to the outside. Okay? It's different when it's a frantic shuffle than when it's like a, hey, we're just moving. Right? So, let's slide this way. Go ahead and hold my collar. There you go. So look, when we're in this position, right, when he slides there, my goal is to beat his leg. Don't stop sliding, right? Slide, slide, slide. There, and see I use my left leg when he's sliding. So what I'm trying to do is when he's sliding, I pass. See how I got that overextended part? When we slide, there, and I catch him with my back step leg. That way, like in Uchimata, when I back step, my leg here is gonna sweep like Uchimata. And then I'm gonna catch that leg where I go Uchimata style for the finish. So that when we're here, when we slide, and then you get that finish nice and smooth, right? So that's what he's doing when he's sliding. Any thoughts on reverse? I might get to reverse later. I, I think I still need a little bit of a warm up. Matt, it comes strictly, it comes strictly from Uchikomi. I think the biggest problem a lot of people have is they don't think of Uchikomi as like strength training. They think of it like a warm up. Where for me, I'm always, I'm always like, hey, Uchikomi is my strength training for judo. It's not just this thing I have to get through in order to do the fun stuff for Randori, right? So if I'm doing, if I'm doing strength work for judo, the goal is straight up and down. Now, I don't think I can do it right now, but I'll, I'll give it a whirl. You'll probably see a little bit of a bend because I got a little bit of a belly, but it is what it is. Now look, right? So when I'm here, when I come in, the goal is to pick him up and then be upright. So there, and I'm as upright as possible with him off the floor. And that's gonna help you develop here and here because you have to shrug. Right? It's not, it's not this. It's not this. I'm not holding him here. Right? There's no lift here. The goal is to get him off the floor while staying upright. Boom. Upright. And look, he's still, he's still around my shoulder. He's not on top of it. He's still around it. And I'm holding him here. I have that strength built up from just years of doing it. So that's pretty much how I did it. A lot of Ushikomi is a lot of development. Whew. Oh, Rico. The Seo Osoto combo. Okay. Uh, the Europeans use this a lot. So th this is kind of something we just picked up on the road as Americans because. You know, we don't think up our own moves that much, but look, here's what it does. Stand square. There, and scoot this way. Okay, so he's square here, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross grip that collar, and when I back step, my angle is at the 45. Okay, my angle is at the 45. It's not straight back. So what you wanna do is when you back step and you hook in like you're doing Osoto, your big toe touches the ground, and look, I open my knee. I don't close it. 
I open it and then I drive that knee to the floor and look, now he's on my hips and you can get him up and over the back, right? If you don't open up your knee, if you don't and you back step and you go here and you close that knee, right? Now you don't have any pull. He's still, he's still able to be there. You want to draw yourself over the top. You want this leg to open and then like a shot in wrestling, you want to penetrate with your hips. And then it'll put that thigh right across your shoulders and then you can drive them up and over, right? There's still a way, there's still a time where you are gonna drop to that outside and try to throw him sideways. This one's just at a different angle, so it's done a little differently. Cool, that used my core though on that, what you call me? I'm feeling it down here. What do you mean by variations for tall guys? What type of variation are you referring to? Can you show any Ponce and Agi variation where you grab his left sleeve with your left hand and right arm goes under his armpit? Are you talking about Wakigatami? But Papadakis, what type of Seyo? Are we talking Rote Seinagi, two hands on the same side Seinagi, Pon Seinagi, traditional Seinagi, Korean Seinagi? There's a lot of, of Seinagis out there. I got a lot of variations. Um, drop tile has been something I've been working on just at the club recently. Um, but it's, it's still not finished yet. It does have a place. Um, if you can catch people sliding, especially with their butt back, it can be a great option. Sorry, I meant from your angle, his left arm. That is his left arm. So my left to his left, cross grip. Right, my left, his left, put your left arm out. Cross grip. Ipon Senagi to Kochi Makikomi. Oh, his right. So you mean from here. You mean from here. I don't do that. I don't do that. My, my version is a gooseneck chicken wing. Right? So a lot of times, some guys, especially in Europe, right, they'll, they'll be holding on here and you just can't, you just can't get that hand on. So what I used to do is I used to pop my shoulder back to get a pull and then my hand used to come close to the wrist and then I could chicken wing. And what it would allow me to do, right, is when I pull, I could fill that space. And now, you can create that circle, right? Because he doesn't actually have the function of this arm while you're in this position. Whereas when I'm here, that elbow can flail around and move around. This gives you that ability to lift him up on top of his toes. So I never went under the arm, not from the sleeve. And I don't know a lot of people who actually have um, continued success, meaning you'll find a throw here or there, but it's not a staple where they actually score. It can be a great way to get an attack off and you could probably have it in your arsenal, right? Like I'm sure I've done this before in major competitions just to get an attack off, but it's not necessarily like how I would think I'm gonna score against my opponent. Um, Andrew, I defend with my knees. I defend with my knees. So in your stance, defend, drop, sail, defend, drop, sail. So he's got to be able to get into the middle, right? So knee down, knee down, and cut that corner, right? So boom, defend the drop, sail. Boom, defend the drop, sail. In the same direction he's trying to go. Yeah, correct. We always teach it. We, everybody always teaches Ipon Senagi from here. I, I'm, not, I'm not really 100% sure why, because if you ever watch an international judo competition, they always do it from the collar, because that's where you control the body from. And I think that's just, people learned it that way when they were kids back in the 80s and 90s, so they just taught it to their students today with no actual competition experience, right? There's a couple of different types of judo. There's the martial arts side, 
and then there's the competition side, and we're talking competition right now. What if he cross grips you, his right hand, on your right collar? Your right hand on my right collar. And your right foot forward as a pivot turn to his right arm over your left shoulder and throw. Is that safe to do? I'm a little confused. Hold on. And you have your right foot forward as a pivot turn to your right, his arm over your left. Like over your left, like this. Are you talking about doing St. Agi like that? That just seems so weird to me. I don't even know what a wakigatami seo is, considering wakigatami is banned. So I'm, I'm a little confused there. I do most of, I do most of my seo standing, just FYI. I, I usually only do dropping things in competition. So I'm, I'm, more, I'm more into the standing versions. You're welcome, Marcel. Oh, you want me to turn the other way? No, 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 no. Look, guys, you're a right-handed judo player. Stay right-handed, right? If you, I, I, might, I might consider Sode to the other side, but you've got to understand the rules of judo here, okay? He's got a cross grip. He can't hang on to this forever. This is your time to actually set your sleeve hand or play defense, right? Because he has to let go. Once he lets go and he goes to square back up, that's when you can charge and you can throw him with your Seo Soto, your Seinagi, your Kata Garumas, your Drop Seinagis, your one-handed Tayos, your Georgian grips, all that stuff. You want to play 100% defense until he lets go or anticipate the transition into Newaza once he drops and makes that bad attack because he realizes he doesn't want to let go, right? Yep, you're welcome. I have trouble keep myself standing when I do say an Agi. It usually ends up being a drop sale. Any tip on how to execute, say, an Agi standing? Yeah, you got to learn to relax. 100% you got to learn to relax. The, the biggest problem people have when they're trying to do a say, an Agi, whether that be Pwn or Morote, say, an Agi, scoot this way, is you, you make your partner feel nervous. Guys, nobody wants to get thrown, right? If I'm going with Ryan and I'm here and I'm barreling down on him and I'm getting physical, he's going to get nervous. You want them to stand up. If, I'm, if I see my partner back your hips up and he's down here and I want to do Sayanagi and he wants to stand back there, I relax. He can't throw me from here, first of all, right? So you have no reason to actually fear anything they do. And that's not a time to get more physical. If the goal is to just throw him and he backs his hips up, just steal his back and then hit him with the Sumi or Kochi or an Osoto and you'll be fine. But if your goal is to do Sayo, You've got to get him to kind of stand up. There, you've got to relax a little bit. Look, I'm loose. Then I can snap the gi and then I can go. Right? Yoitsu. And also, right, you want to, you want to probably practice splitting your hips because if you have to drop, you're probably trying to do it with your feet square and you're squatting too much and you're having trouble lifting. Try splitting your hips whichever way is more comfortable so you can attach him to you, right? And then you can pick him up, and now you can throw. Okay, that's something that'll help you out a lot, being able to split the hips, right? You don't want to be in a straight line. You want to be in a shoulder width stance, like a lunge, okay? So that you can slide back into position. Don't step forward. Always step back into the throw. Yeah, big whoa, whoa. I don't, like people, people always get mad, right? They're always like... Go ahead and bend over. They're always like, yeah, he just won't, he just won't stand up. Stand up. We'll stop beating the crap out of him. Guys, let him. 
right? I'll, I'll tell you all the time, like if, I, if I'm here and I'm smashing Ryan's head and he's here and I want to throw him with Uchimata, right? Like I can't because I just busted him in the head. I smashed him down the ground. I'm yanking him around. He's nervous. Nobody's going to stand there. Nobody in their right mind would stand. You wouldn't stand there. So when you're in that position and you're here and you feel it like, and then relax, relax, move, relax, move. Keep your body in good position, but relax. Understand that they can't throw you from there because you have a dominating grip and dominating position. If you have a dominating grip and a non-dominating position, you can get thrown, right? But you got to win three of two of the three boxes, right? Grip, position, an ability to attack, right? You could have a winning grip and not an ability to attack. So you wanna make sure you have two in order to have the third. Oh, you missed it when I talked about the Turkish Billy picking me up. It's because I, I didn't follow my rules of bringing his head down and doing coach room. I did it when he was standing up and tried to enter and bring his head down at the same time. You wanna make sure you do it in stages. Do you have to bring the feet together to finish the throw with the split hip variation? No, 100% you don't. So when I'm, a lot of times, uh, Iliadis used to do this. When he used to split the hip, he would come here, up, and then cut the angle at the 45 like a tire. So you don't necessarily have to pick him up all the time. Do you do say an Agi to shorter opponents? Yes, but dropping, or the Osoto version, right? Those are my two go-tos against shorter people. Michael Pan, in, outside always. Outside grip always for sale. Now look, the reason, the reason for that, the reason for that is when I'm here, right? My hand is to the outside versus his to the inside because I want to be able to crush it no, keep it strong, keep it strong. Keep it strong, nice and strong. There, I wanna be able to crush it, and then when I release the pressure, there, you see how he kinda of like leaned over the top? When I release the pressure, he goes. It's very difficult when you're on bottom and he's crushing your arm to like actively lift it up because you're focused on keeping it here and not getting crushed. Okay, so I'm always on top, and I'm always trying to crush it and create that angle so that when he opens it, it helps me to rotate. I can time that opening, okay? The other thing too, is it allows me to throw my uppercut, okay, into the arm and generate that extra pressure. Remember what I said, there's two types of variation. One to the arm, two to the body. The one to the arm is when they flinch inward and not outward and open. So sometimes when I break this down and then flex, when I release it, this, no, stay, 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 stay down, stay down, stay down. There, that happens, right? Where you do all that work to get it down, and then you pull, and you release it, but the arm stays here. That's where that uppercut, boom. Look at it, see how I moved him? Because he's flexed. I go right to the elbow, and I pull. I throw that uppercut, and I use my whole body to hit him with it. So when I'm here, when I split, boom, together. See how I stand him up? I stand him up, and now, that his elbow is so high, even when he tries to squat down to the ground, it doesn't matter. Remember this rule of thumb, if you're gonna take anything away from this. If his chest is on my back, and I put my back on the floor, his back has to be on the floor, right? I don't care how tall, how short, none of it matters. If his chest is facing my back, and I put my back on the floor, his back has to be on the floor. Okay, and it was one of my rules of thumb whenever I'd be trying to throw anybody, right? Because if I go like this, go ahead and hold on, right? And I go like this, and now Ryan, go ahead and drop down to your knees. Yeah, and I'm trying to throw him, right? If I can get his chest to my back, and now I can drive, I can get his back to the floor with my back to the floor, right? With no lift. All you have to do is have that connection and then you can finish that throw with a little bit of drive and a little bit of thought. For drop sayo, do the underside of your toes face 
Um, so Joseph, um, it's personal preference. I go laces down, meaning my laces are facing down. I don't go live hopes. I feel like I can slide in a little bit easier. And at the same time, I've developed a curl with my knuckles so that I can push just as well as my toes live. And a good way to practice, right, is to just check your distance. So when I'm here, watch out, Ryan, I might fall over. When I'm here, right, with my laces down, but my toes live where my knuckles are here, I feel like when I pull up, I can get that same spring as when I'm here, right? I get to that same position. So my power output is identical. But what I've allowed myself to do with my drop is to go from flat up to toes live, and then I can drive and get that same distance, okay? But that's just, that's my personal preference. Um, Simon, I have never had anyone cartwheel out of my opponent saying I ever throughout my entire career. No international player has ever done that. You're welcome, Joseph. Um, probably the best thing you can do, Tim, apart from like your core work, um, is shrugging because you're going to need to be able to lift. Okay. The other one is weights at distances. Okay. Cause you need to strengthen the lat and the shoulder stability in order to keep people up and rotate. But the big one, the big one's going to be your low back and your core. Okay. You're going to have to have a really, really strong low back. Okay, from an isometric position, not so much from a how many like good mornings can you do holding a bar in the gym, right? That's not what we're doing. We're not deadlifting. We're not doing all this. We're strengthening the isometric part of the low back, okay? And also the core. Can you show how you do Uchi Komi for your opponent? Say, now, yeah, sure, Simon. So here, I'll go straight on. I'll do a couple in both directions. So go ahead and stand square. There you go. Relax. I always gotta make sure my partner's relaxed. Boom. Every time, straight forward. Yes, Massimo, it does. It does, it does create that extra slack in the gi in order to hit that reverse sail, right? So when you are here and you, nope, stay strong. And you're like this and you're trying to play, it does give you that ability to hit the Korean sayo to the other side. It gives you the extra slack in the gi. Because most people, most judo players don't actually practice the ability of actually moving, nope, stay there, stay there, of moving the jacket, right? They, they just grab it to grab it. No, I hate Ipon Senagi off the sleeve. I think it's stupid. We got a couple more minutes, guys. A couple more minutes. Tandori, thanks. I love spell chat. Anthony, a foot sweep. Practice your foot sweep timing. When you train reverse sail, is there a way to do? No, um, you'd want to be able to practice it uh, in a live scenario. We always practice left on right to start. Just stand up. There you go. Relax, relax, relax. relax. Just face forward. There you go. We practice at the angle. And then what I do is I practice my skip step. And the big thing is making sure this elbow is closed, right? So you would open, close the elbow. Open, close the elbow. And then off the wrong side for the finish. Um, I like two hands on the same collar. That's usually the one I think is the highest percentage. Just here, just move him and then whip him into position. So from here, I'm gonna leave my right foot where it is and I whip him. Now it's top of the triangle 
and then we enter. For me, that's the, that's the easiest. So my, my favorite competition variation for Ponce and Agi is here. I'm nice and heavy. I'm nice and heavy. And then what I do, stand a little bit of the righty. There, keep that hand high. There. He's here. And what we're doing is we're, we're playing with this other hand, right? So I'm playing. I'm playing with this other hand. And I don't know why people did it, but they did it to me all the time. They like to play patty cake. Like, they're like, hey, how's it going? High five. All the time. I don't know why. I don't know why they wouldn't grab something, right? But then, anyways, I would get my thumb. Put your hand up to the camera. My thumb in the meat. Okay, only my thumb. Don't put your hand here, because if he grabs your hand, it's going to be hard to get out. What you want to do is put your thumb in here so that you can roll his hand out as you step across. Then we could fit in, pick him up, and then throw him. That was my favorite version for Ipon Sanagi. My favorite, my favorite drop sale was done against lefties, okay? Where I would actually beat them to the inside, but I'd have a terrible inside grip, a terrible inside grip. I wouldn't be up here, because if I was up here, I was mauling them. So I would actually get to the inside, keep your elbow in, there you go, sleeve, and then stand your ground, stand your ground, there. So, and I, I would be down here, but I would be inside and be kind of useless. So what I would do is I would shrug and dance, there. And see how I create this big opening here on the side? Now when I square up, boom, he's open nice and wide. Let's change that angle again so they can see. There you go. So when I'm in here, I open and pull down, and then I open and keep him up. Now that he's open, we can drop underneath and finish the throw. So for me, that was, that was my favorite. Simon, I answered that one already. Uh, you probably want to go back like 10 minutes and check out that answer. Um, and I think it's 100% just personal preference on what you think your feet are used to. I used to always just uh, turf toe my foot. So yeah, I just got used to laces down. Uchi call me ban. If you don't have anybody um, at home to practice and you want to practice opening up as wide as you can and then closing off. I did a video on it. Uh, I'm sure you can go back into my YouTube videos and find it. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times it's not necessarily set up as much as it's previous attack. Okay, previous attack, meaning if I'm trying, if I'm trying to throw my righty with a standing sail and he's keeping that shoulder back and I just can't, I can't get to him, right? I'm just not being able to do that. What I'll do is I'll do things like a Kosoto and then he'll be able to step out, boom, and I'll get a good shot. We'll go down to the mat. It'll be what it is. If he keeps that shoulder back again, a lot of times like I'll pull, I'll just pull him there. And then we'll off the grip, we'll try to drop in Ochi, and they're all gonna miss, right? They're not gonna be like, oh, you scored with it. That's not what it's about. All I'm trying to do is condition my partner, okay? That if he keeps turning this shoulder, he's not gonna be able to throw, but I'm gonna be able to score. Another one I used to always do is here, and then he would step back. And then as he did that, I would drop, turn, and then try to finish my drop sail as he stepped out of the throw. And remember, all I'm doing is trying to condition him to not do it, so when he comes back, now that shoulder's not gonna be as far back, right? Now, now I can blast him with the throw I was looking for. So they're not so much like a one-two combo, as much as it's, I'm just planning, I'm getting through these first couple of exchanges in order to get that one shot I've been looking for. If you grabbed him as a lefty with your left foot forward, my left foot would never be forward. That's mistake number one. So we're done there. Can't, can't have your left foot forward, I'm a righty. Do 
Double, oh, sode. No, we're not doing sode today, only sayos. We should probably do a whole nother class just on sode because there's so many different variations in what, what you do with your hands. How do you overcome the high grip? You gotta go back to the gripping live workshops because we go over all that. Right, I wanna make sure that the workshops are designated to the title specifically so that when you guys go train three months from now, you can come back and you can find the right workshop and kind of work your way through it. Um, Matt, it would be good to work the split hip um, movements. Just because you're, you wanna be able to make sure you're on base with your timing. You wanna make sure that you, you actually have a good solid foundation and you're not ending up here where the band is gonna pull you off your base. Right, the hard part a lot of you guys are gonna have is when you're straight on, you wanna be able to rotate out of the way, rotate out of the way so that you can cut the angle and come back and you end up square. Right, so that, that's something you really wanna make sure you, you uh, practice on. Don't go from here and then cut the angle off center. That's what a lot of people do, they, they change that angle. You wanna start center and cut the angle so that you work into the, into the throw, right? A good rule of thumb, guys. Andrew, thank you for the super chat. We're gonna redo Sayanagi on Wednesday. And then I'm thinking, you guys can let me know because we're gonna wrap this up. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about doing it in a waza course, right? Let's talk about Nawaz, like how do we get underneath the chin for chokes? How do we get to the arm? What's the best way to transition? What are we looking for after we, like a lot of you guys are asking how to defend Sayo. But it's like, what do we do from there? So I want to work on, I've defended the throw. What's my plan of attack? How do I set up my attacks? What's the do's and don'ts? I kind of want to go over that in a live workshop for everybody. So I'm thinking Nawaza is going to be my next topic next Sunday right now. But let me know if that makes sense. I know a lot of judo players hate Nawaza, but I think that's from a lack of understanding um, because they just feel like they're doing this all the time because there's not a lot of technical stuff behind it. Um, but look, let's take a look at this, guys. Um, let's see here. We got to have a spot. Let's see. Where's a good spot? Um, uh, pop your belt off. Yeah, pop your belt off. There we go. Okay. Here, we're going to make a little spot here just because this, this is kind of what I want you guys to wrap your head around. Okay. We got, a, we got a nice little spot there for Ryan. Okay, go, Ryan, stand right over that and spread your legs. There. So Ryan's standing straight over his belt. When you do a split hip throw, okay, a split hip Sanagi, whether it's double collar, Ippon Sanagi, Marote Sanagi, <coughs> doesn't matter. You want him to go up and then down in the same spot. Okay, so up and then down in the same spot. And what that looks like is this. So when I'm here, I'm gonna cut the angle, I'm gonna cut the angle, and I'm gonna dart through. Now look, when I pick him up, I throw him right where he's standing, okay? So that's an important detail that you wanna make sure you hit when you're working with your bands at home, okay? You don't want to do this and then not have that distance. You wanna fill the space, okay? Fill the space up. Fill it up, pick him up, and then bring him over the top so that he lands right where he was at. Okay, so just make sure that you can actually accomplish that. You can use a dot on the ground, you can use a roll of tape, we use the belt, it doesn't matter, even with your Uchikomi bands, right? Because when you're here, the, the circle should be in front, but when you pull up and you cut through, when you stand up, you should be looking down right where you're gonna throw him in that spot. You wanna make sure your path is right, okay? Boom, I'm glad you guys like that little detail. <laughs> it's amazing what you guys find like useful. I wouldn't have thought that that was useful. But I like, I like colors and lines to like help teach people because I think having targets gives you somewhere to go, right? Matt, I'm glad you liked the session. Thank you for the super chat. S super thankful. 
Do you think the Sanagi with your foot very far between the legs is higher percentage than a regular drop sail? No, I just think whoever develops it uh, more is, you know, the right person for the job. Here, can you put this on really quick? Okay, guys, I want to show you another little thing. Since you guys found the belt super helpful, okay? And I didn't think about this until just now. So you guys that have actually stuck around, okay, you're going you're gonna to get some super valuable knowledge right now. Okay, stuff that's usually only taught in the Mastering Sayanagi uh, instructional. Okay, so I don't know if you want to timestamp this for the, when you want to come back and watch it, but look, put it back to the camera. Aaron, you're welcome. You're welcome. Now check this out, guys. Look, I want you guys to pay attention, not to my upper body, but I want you to pay attention to my right leg behind this leg, okay? It's been one of the secrets to my Sayanagi for years and people haven't been able to figure it out. But look, people always wonder like, well, Travis, how do you get to lift him up? Because if he's squatting, right, it's gonna be hard to lift, right? But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split his hip in such a way, okay, remember, we're paying attention from here down. Okay, I'm gonna split his hip in such a way that when I, when I pop my leg to my heel and I step back, you'll see this leg kick out and you'll see Ryan fall off balance. Now look, I'm here, look at my foot. This one right here, I'm starting off the center of the triangle, remember? That way when I back step, my right foot is dead center inside his leg. Turn a little bit, do a little crooked to the camera. There you go, there you go, okay? Boom, that way when I come through with this leg here, see how it's behind his leg? That way it's brushing it. Super important detail, okay? So if you have like a roommate or somebody, even if they don't do judo, all they gotta do is be able to stand there because you wanna make sure you're brushing that leg with your leg so that when you're in a good position, right? And you're here, when you pop, there. See how he kinda like lift it up? So when I pop him, I can one, I can one, two my shoulders and stand back up. So when I'm here, pop and it comes up. Pop, pop, and I can pop that leg up off the mat. And that's what I'm doing when I'm shuffling to the side, walking forward and backwards, is I'm getting my leg to pop and catch his leg before it hits the ground, okay? Can you end Sayanagi 90 degree in relationship with the opponent's feet? I have no idea what that means. I think you used Google Translate on that and it messed it up. But guys, we're gonna wrap this up for today. Uh, thank you guys for stopping by. I really appreciate all the super chats. Thank you guys, I'm glad you guys appreciate what we're doing here on like the virtual dojo. Boom, everybody loves, everybody loves the belt. I should bring more like little things to like give you guys like angles and corners so maybe you guys can better understand it on the mat here, right? Maybe that'll be helpful for everybody. I, got, I think I got some stuff lying around. You're welcome, everybody. But remember, oh, Monday night, 8.30, me and Shintaro Higashi, another YouTuber here in the state. We're gonna do a live Q&A, okay? Live Q&A, 8.30 on my channel. Tuesday night, I got Angie Delgado, live Q&A, 8.30 again. And then Wednesday, me and Ryan are back here in the dojo. We're going to do another Sayanagi course just for everybody else. Yes, tomorrow with Shintaro. I'm glad this helped everybody. So yeah, come on by 8.30 tomorrow night, Eastern time. Ask me and Shintaro some questions. We're going to be talking judo. We're going to be talking philosophy, training methods, experiences, being in Japan, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So until next time, and hey guys, in the comments, right, when, this, when I shut this thing off, let me know if you think a Newaza live course would make sense. I can give you guys some like nifty little tips and tricks in order to beat some judo players really easy. I think I can anyways. But until next time, everybody.